Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a tier list of what I consider the best value mountain bike brands available. So as I said in my buyer's guide videos, value really is a relative term, and it really takes into consideration all factors of the bike. So we've got the spec that you're getting for the money, the geometry, as well as the suspension performance, and also the frame quality. So there's a few things that really tie together to give you a good value package. So with that being said, we have some bikes that cost say $3,000 that are really, really good value. And then we've also got some entry level hard towels that cost around three to $400. So we're really gonna be covering all bike brands and models in this list. So we've got this little list here that I made on Tier Maker. If you wanna do the list yourself and make your own tier list, I'll leave the link in the description and you can kind of make your own as well. So that's pretty cool too. So starting at the top, we've got S, which is a really, really good value bike. So they're gonna be the best on the market. And then right at the bottom, we've got Dentist, which Kind of self-explanatory there if you're on the pink bike comment section. It's really for those people that can really afford the really expensive bikes and aren't necessarily really good value. So the first bike brand on the list is Santa Cruz and pretty much everyone always wants to own a Santa Cruz. They're probably one of the coolest bikes out on the market. Awesome bikes, great suspension performance, geometry, but the value really isn't there. And they're definitely going into the dentist, unfortunately. So the next bike brand is Bird. If you've been a follower of the channel for a long time, you would have known I used to have a Bird AM9. And I really, really like that bike. It's a really great bike, great geometry, and the suspension performance is really, really good too. So what's awesome about Bird is you can really customize the build how you want. So you've got the base builds that kind of build off the drivetrain. So you've got like a GX build, SLX build, and then you can really customize the parts that you want on. So if you want different brakes, distant suspension fork, all that kind of good stuff. So it's really great to see that you can kind of spec the bike how you want. And through that, you can really cut some costs on stuff that you normally wouldn't spend a lot of money on. So that's really good to see. So you can really spec the bike how you want and get the value that you really need to. And the value that they offer is really good too. So yeah, they're definitely going to be an A for me on this one. So onto one of the bigger brands, we're onto Cannondale now. And I feel like Cannondale have really been trying to bring out some cool bikes and signing some cool people like Josh Bryson and all that kind of stuff. And the Habits are a really cool bike. They've also got their Motera e-bike, which was one of the first e-bikes to come out with a dual crown. So uh, it's a really cool e-bike there as well, but they're definitely kind of missing that value point as well. So I'm going to have to give them a C. So now into transition, they're a really cool bike brand. I've always wanted to own a Smuggler or a Sentinel. For this year, they seem to be focusing more on the carbon builds. They've just brought out the carbon Sentinel as well as the Scout, I believe. So they definitely haven't brought out their entry level alloy builds for this year. They might do that in the near future. I don't know yet but the alloy builds are definitely where the value is at. So this year, the value isn't necessarily as good as say it was last year, but they definitely still offer some pretty decent value carbon frames if you're really looking for that. And they seem to spec their bikes pretty smartly as well. They kind of spec them as a racer would. So if you're looking for some more burly builds, I definitely check them out. They definitely aren't necessarily the best value in the market, but for more of a boutique brand, they seem to be pretty good. So I'm gonna give them a C. So now onto DaVinci, which offers some pretty cool builds as well. The like Transition, they've got some nice burly bikes that can really handle some abuse. I really like that they offer carbon as well as alloy builds for most of their models. So looking at the Troy GX alloy, it's half decently spec for the money. So for $3,499 US dollars, you get some RockShox Select Plus stuff, GX Eagle as well as KT brakes. So half decent build there. Not ridiculously good value, but pretty decent as well. So we're gonna give them a C as well. So now onto Rocky Mountain now. They aren't necessarily the cheapest brand in Australia, but I know in the US and Canada, they're a bit more affordable. So if we're comparing apples to apples here, looking at the Instinct uh, 50 compared to the Troy GX Alloy that we looked before, they're pretty close in terms of specs, so not too much of a difference there between those two brands. So good thing about Rocky Mountain, they offer some more entry level hardtails and that kind of stuff like that too. So the Growler, which is a really cool hardtail, which you definitely check out if you're looking for something a bit more affordable. So because of that, we're gonna have to give them a B. So moving on to Commonsar now, so a direct-to-consumer brand, they have some really, really good builds for the money, especially if you're looking at the towards the top end stuff, you're getting some ultimate gear suspension as well as top-level drivetrains and brakes and that kind of stuff like that for significantly cheaper than the competition. So if you're looking for a really good race-ready package, definitely Commonsar is worth checking out. If we're comparing apples to apples, like the Instinct 50, as well as the Troy that we looked at before, you're definitely getting a lot better value package with the Common Cell compared to those bikes at that price point. So if we're gonna give Common Cell a rating, we're gonna give them an A. So now moving on to YT, and they're definitely renowned for their really, really good value. They're another direct-to-consumer brand, so obviously gonna offer a bit value value than say a bike shop brand. And the new Jeff C base for this year definitely is probably one of the best value bikes that you can get on the market. At $2,299, it's an absolute steal. And even the carbon builds of the Jeff C even started at a better price point than the Meta TR29 that we just looked at as well. So we're gonna have to give YT an S. 
So now we have a brand new brand on the market and that's Privateer and they just released their Privateer 161 which definitely was a bike that came out to much fanfare because it was an absolute steal for the money coming in at 3,075 US dollars. You're getting an absolute race ready bike at a definitely a cheaper price in the competition. So what you're getting with the Privateer is really, really good gear that's really on the leading edge of geometry in the current market, especially for an enduro race bike. It's definitely the geometry that you should be looking for. And the spec's really good for the money as well. You're getting RockShox Ultimate Level Suspension, you're getting Magura MT5 brakes, you're getting an SLX drive train, you're getting Hunt Enduro Wide Wheels. It's definitely a bike that's absolutely insane value and they really have put smart spec into what you would want for a race level bike. So yeah, we're gonna have to definitely give Privateer an S as well. So now onto Fazari, which is a US direct to consumer brand and they offer some really great value as well. The Wire Peak is probably one of the best value e-bikes in the market at the moment. So if you're looking for a great value dual suspension e-bike, I'd definitely check that out. There's also the La Salle Peak, which is kind of their enduro or mountain bike. And the entry level build comes in at $3,599. And you're getting an absolutely crazy bike, especially with the carbon frame. So it only comes in a carbon frame, but you're getting ultimate level RockShox suspension gear on this stuff. So it's really good to see. And it's definitely one of the best value carbon bikes on the market at the moment. Factor in that, they also have some really good value alloy dual suspension bikes on the kind of the cheaper end, as well as some good value hardtails too. And they also offer a 30 day test ride period, which is awesome for a direct to consumer brand as well. So we're gonna have to give them an S as well. Now onto Pivot, and not much to really say here, they're absolutely awesome bikes, and if you've got the money, definitely get one, but yeah, we're going to have to give them a dentist as well. Moving on to Cube now, and they're a German brand that sometimes fly under the radar, but they've definitely been on the EWS scene for a decent time, and I really dig the Cube Stereo 170. It's an awesome bike, not necessarily the craziest Geo, they definitely tend to be on the more conservative side, but this one is a bit more modern than the other bikes that they offer, and it's really good spec too, so it's definitely a bike worth checking out if you're looking for a nice, flickable race bike. Another good thing about this bike is it has adjustable suspension, so you can also adjust the leverage curve if you've got a coil or an air shock, so that's an awesome feature. And they've got some decent value other bikes as well. Their e-bikes are really good value, have slightly longer chain stays, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they offer great value for the money. And then they've also got the Stereo 140 and 150. Again, not the most modern Geo, but the spec that you're getting for the money is really, really good, and they've got carbon frames as well. So the price that they're offering these carbon frames at is pretty crazy as well. So we're gonna have to give them an A. So moving on to Kona now, and they aren't necessarily the cheapest bike here in Australia, but I know in the US and Canada, they are slightly cheaper. But if you're comparing apples to apples, the 134 model compared to that DaVinci Troy as well as that Instinct that we looked at earlier, the prices are pretty similar, so we're gonna have to give them a C as well. So moving on to Diamondback now, and personally, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the geometry of their bikes, but they do offer some really great value for money. So if you are looking to do, say, a frame swap in the future, it's definitely a great bike to kind of build on and start on. So I'm gonna to have to give them an A, just because if they were to get an S, the geometry would have to be a bit more progressive and they haven't kind of hit that point but they definitely offer some really great value for money. And if you're starting off in mountain biking, they're definitely a great option. So moving on to Gorilla Gravity, and they're definitely a really cool bike brand. They used to have some really cool alloy builds with some great value for money, but last year they switched to carbon production and they've got this really cool carbon production system that they're the only ones in the industry that are using at the moment. It was, I think it was pioneered by Boeing and they've kind of got the technology into the bike. So it's really awesome to see and actually manufactured in the US as well, which is really good to see as well. The cool thing about all the models in the lineup, they use the same front triangle and the front triangle also has adjustable geometry as well. So you can change the headset cup, switch it around and then you can get longer or shorter reach which is definitely a cool feature but you can actually change the seat stays of the bike and you can actually have a completely different bike so they've got the kits that you can get you just need to change the rear shock as well as your fork travel and then you've got a completely different bike so say if you ride on your local trails they aren't that crazy you've got a decently small short travel setup and then when you go to the bike park you've got the other parts swap them over and you've got a long-legged big enduro bike so it's definitely a cool bike and if you definitely need multiple bikes in your lineup it can kind of take up just one bike so that's definitely really cool and the build's actually really really good value for money as well so if, so with all that being considered i definitely have to give them an a so moving on to narin now and you know how much i love narin i've got my alpine trail back here behind me and they're definitely really, really great value for money. And most places in the world, their bike shop, in Australia we've got them sold by bicycles online, but the fact that you can get really great value for money in a bike shop brand with really, really good geo too is definitely a good thing to see. So looking at the new Rift Zone, it's got some really, really great geometry that you normally wouldn't see on more affordable bikes. They're really pioneering good geometry on really affordable bikes. 
But what I also like about Marin is they put some really good thought into the entry level hardtail. So like the Bobcat Trail, as well as the Bolinus Ridge, they've got some decent geometry. So 68, 67 degree head angles and some decent reaches on there too, which is really gonna help more entry level riders have a more stable, comfortable bike that they can really progress on. So it's awesome to see as well. So with all that being considered, they get an S as well. So moving on to Forbidden Bikes now, they've got that really cool high pivot suspension system, which is awesome to see. I used to have one of my Craftworks and it works an absolute dream, but they're definitely a more of a boutique brand and they're only frame only at the moment. So unfortunately they're gonna have to go a dentist, but they're really cool bikes. So moving on to Ibis now, and they've really bucked the trend that boutique brands can't offer good value because they've actually offered some really great value builds for this year. The Ripmo AF is the second best value enduro bike that you can get at the moment, just behind that privateer. But looking at the build, you get really good DVO suspension, NX drivetrain, so it might not be the best, but at this price point for 2,999 US dollars, it's absolutely crazy that you're getting that Geo gray suspension performance as well as the dual link suspension system for at a great price point. So it's awesome to see that they've actually offered some really decent builds with the Ripmo AF. And the carbon builds, again, might not be the cheapest, but you've got that option there with the alloys. So definitely have to give them an A for this year. So moving on to Scott now, and I definitely feel like it's a brand that a lot of people have mixed feelings about. I think that's mainly due to the twin lock, but the Genius and Ransom are actually some really, really nice bikes. I actually really wanted to own a Genius back in the day when they first came out. The geometry looked really good, and I was really intrigued by the suspension as well. So they definitely offer some really good bikes. So in the past, Scott hasn't necessarily been the best value brand, but for this year, the 940 and 950 Genius, they actually offer some decent value for money, so I'm gonna have to give them a B. So moving on to Zeroed now, they've got some really cool bikes. Definitely really cool that they've got the gearbox there, so they've got the pinion gearbox in the center of the bike, so no need for that pesky derailleur. But again, they're definitely more of a boutique brand, and you do have to spend a fair bit extra to get that drivetrain, as well as these carbon frames that they offer. So they're gonna have to go to the dentist, but they're really, really cool bikes, and if you do want a gearbox, it's definitely one to look out for. So moving on to Giant now, and they are probably the most popular bike brand in the world. And because of that, the large production value, they definitely offer some decent value. While I'm not a huge fan of some of their bikes, so the Stance, as well as the Trans 27.5, as well as the Rain 27.5, they're definitely a bit more dated now in terms of geometry. And because of that, the build value definitely isn't the best. But looking at the Trans 29, as well as the Rain 29, they're definitely some really, really cool bikes. So looking at the Trans 29, the Trans 3 as well as the Trans 2 are definitely really, really great value for money and they're definitely really competitively priced. So I'm going to have to give Giant an A. So moving on to Banshee now, they have some really cool frames that you can buy. So they're frame only, so you can really build them up how you like. The frames are around about 2,200 US dollars and they've got a lot of new bikes for 2020. So updated geometry that's really pushing the limits of what bikes are these days. And they've got the twin link suspension system as well. And the kinematics of the suspension is really, really good too. So if you're looking for a frame swap or you're looking to build up a frame, they're definitely a great option. So for value, we're gonna have to give them a B. So moving on to Chain Reactions house brand, we've got Vetus and they offer some really, really good value for money. So starting with the Nucleus as well as the Santier, they're really, really great value for money hardtails and they've won hardtail of the year in their respective price categories. So if you're looking for a good budget entry level hardtail, they're definitely the ones to look out for. So for 2020, they've also got their entry level dual suspension bike, the Mythic. So it's a really good trail bike and offers great value for money. Add to that, you've got their trail or mountain bike, the Escarp, as well as their enduro bike, the Summit. And you've got some really, really great value for money dual suspension bikes. And the e-bikes are also great value for money. So they've also got the e-Summit as well as the e-Escarp. And they're definitely some of the best value for money on the market. So we're going to have to give Vetus an S. So moving on to Focus now, not too much to say about Focus, kind of again, middle of the road, geometry is nothing too crazy and the value is not too crazy either, so we're going to give them a B. So Calibre is another brand that's really built on value. The Boss Nut is a bike that's absolutely everywhere in the UK, and I think that's mainly due to the ride to work scheme. I believe bikes kind of under a thousand pounds was kind of like subsidized. I could be wrong if I'm not from the UK, so please correct me, but I think that was the main reason that everyone had them. They were below that kind of thousand pound threshold so everyone really got on them and kind of took advantage of that scheme and it wasn't just good because it was as cheap the geo was pretty good and the spec that you got for the money was really good too so it was a really great bike for people to start out on and then they've also got the Sentry, which is essentially an ews ready bike on a budget it's got some awesome geo and the spec that you're getting for the money is really really good too so we're going to have to give them an s as well so moving on to Radon now, and they're a great value for money German direct-to-consumer brand. So if you live in the EU, you definitely would have heard about them. But if you definitely live in the US or Australia, you probably haven't heard of them that much. And I don't think we can get them. You could be corrected wrong, but I think they're definitely an EU-only brand. So if you live in the EU, definitely check them out. 
The Swoop Alloy has some really good geo and the spec is really good for the money as well. It's definitely won a lot of awards too, so it's definitely one to check out if you're looking for a great value for money enduro bike. They've also got some great value carbon builds as well. The Slide as well as their e-bike the Render is definitely really great value for money too, so we're going to have to give them an A. So Norco is another brand that's really stepped it up in the past few years as well. They released the Fluid last year, which has some great gear as well as spec for the money. And it's really a great trail bike for people to enter kind of trail riding as well as getting their first dual suspension bike. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for an entry level dual suspension bike. They've also got the new side and optic for this year. And the alloy builds on the site are definitely really, really good value for money. The A2 as well as the A1 are absolutely awesome value for money. Carbon builds on the site and then the optic. The optic is carbon only, but the value on those carbon builds is absolutely crazy too. The optic as well as the site are definitely tailored towards more fast trails. So if you live in a more fast area, definitely check those out. It's definitely really good to see a bike shop brand offering this really, really progressive geometry that's really catered towards those fast trails. Again, it might not be my favorite kind of style of bike, but definitely if you live on some faster trails, definitely check out those two bikes. So we're gonna to have to give Norco an A. So New Priest is another brand that offers some decent value as well. It's good to see the EWS Champ on some decent value bikes. The Mega, the Mega comes in both 27.5 and 29 in alloy and carbon builds. So definitely some great value there if you're looking for those bikes. They've also got the new Reactor as well, which is their trail bike that offers some decent value too, as well as their Scout Hardtail. So we're gonna have to give them an A. So moving on to Mondraker now, the pioneers of forward geometry. Unfortunately, their prices aren't that forward thinking, so we're gonna have to give them a dentist. Onto Orbea now, and they definitely have some really cool bikes. Depending on where you are in the world, they might be direct to consumer or they might be in bike shops, so definitely check that out. But the Rallon as well as the Occam are some really, really cool bikes. Definitely their best value bikes are the alloy builds on the Occam. So if you're looking for a really capable trail or mountain bike, definitely check it out. The H30 is probably my favorite build that they have. So I'll give them an A for that Occam build and then we're gonna have to give them a B for the rest. So moving on to Merida now, and in Australia, they're actually really, really good value for money. They're actually pretty crazy what you get for the money. But in Europe, they tend to be a bit more expensive. So depending on where you are in the world, the value is gonna be a bit more different. But in Australia, the value, as I said, is pretty crazy. The spec that you're getting on the 160 as well as the 120, it's definitely absolutely crazy, as well as their e-bikes as well, the E160, E140, definitely really, really good too. So I'm gonna have to give them an A. So moving on to Polygon now, and they probably have the best value entry-level drill suspension bike in the market in the Siskiyou D. What I like with the Siskiyou, it's a bike that's really gonna progress with the rider, and it's really good in a lot of different applications. My personal favorite model is the Siskiyou D6, what you're getting, you get through axle and rear as well as the front, air fork as well as air shock. You get a one by drivetrain, a dropper post, hydraulic brakes, and that's just over a thousand US dollars. So it's really, really great value for money. And they also have the Siskiyou T as well as the Siskiyou N and some other great value for money hardtails. So they're definitely getting an S. So moving on to the big S now, Specialized. They're definitely a bit of a mixed bag. The Specialized Enduro is carbon only, and I really like the GA as well as the suspension performance on that bike, but it's definitely out of reach for a lot of people. Hopefully the new status that they're just about to release, I've seen a few posts on Instagram, that kind of stuff like that, should remedy that, but it definitely uses a different suspension system, different layout there. So it's definitely not gonna be as good and it's definitely tailored probably more towards the free ride market. So definitely a bit of out of reach if you're looking for an enduro racer, but definitely some more fun longer travel bikes that are coming soon. Then you've also got the Stump Jumper, which is definitely, again, a bit of a mixed bag. There's some lower end uh, alloy builds that are definitely a little bit more better value, but the carbon builds, again, definitely aren't the best value. There's also the Fuse Hardtail, which is half decent value. So we're gonna have to give them a B. So next up we have Trek. So that's rounding off the big three of Specialized, Giant, and Trek. And they're probably the second best value just behind Giant. So the Fuel EX 7 and 8 are probably the best value builds in the lineup. I definitely like those bikes. There's also the alloy slash builds as well. They're half decent value too. The car builds, again, not necessarily the best value, but I definitely feel like those are probably the best value in the lineup. They've got some decent level hardtails as well. Got some entry level hardtails, as well as the Roscoe, which is kind of like a good entry level trail hardtail. So definitely some half decent value there. I'd probably give them a B plus. So they're going to B, but they definitely kind of aren't at that A level yet. So give them a B. So next up we have GT, which is another bike shop brand. I definitely feel like they've definitely improved their bikes in the past few years. So they got the Force, the new Force, as well as the Sensor as well. So they've kind of dished the iDrive and they've gone to a horse link system, which is good to see, kind of simplifies things, cuts some costs. But they definitely aren't the smartest with specking their bike. I feel like a lot of the spec choices they make just don't make a lot of sense. And for that, we're gonna to have to give them a B. So moving on to Canyon now, and they're definitely the pioneers in the direct-to-consumer market, offering some really, really good value for money. 
The prices on their entry level spectral as well as neuron builds are absolutely crazy. What you're getting for the money on those bikes is insane. They've also got some really good value for money carbon builds. Their enduro bike, the Strive, offers some really good carbon builds there and definitely really, really good value for money. So we're gonna have to give them an S. So finally, we made it to the last bike and it's a Yeti. I know Yeti's awesome bikes, awesome gear, but the value is not necessarily best. So we're gonna have to give them a dentist. So we're ending on a negative, but we've got some really good spread here on all the bike brands. So there you go, there's my tier list of the best value mountain bike brands on the market. If you wanna do this yourself, again, I'll put the link in the description. You kinda of mess around with it yourself, have a bit of fun. But yeah, I definitely feel like there's a really good spread in value and a lot of these brands, they offer something different. Again, might not be the best value, but if you've got the money, you can get some really cool bikes. But yeah, definitely those S brand bikes are definitely gonna be the best value for money on the market. So if you're looking for a new bike and just looking for some great value, those S ones are the best and there's also some great value in those A's as well. So there you go, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, also leave a like as well, it's always appreciated. And as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.